Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks, and welcome to Theology Tuesday. We are exciting Greater St. Stephen First Church, located at 3728 East Berry Street, on the corner of Sydney at East Berry, in the heart of Southeast Fort Worth, Texas. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 51240, Fort Worth, Texas 76105. This week we are in our book, Finding God in Hard Places. And last week we began our conversation, A Place Called Wits In. And today we're gonna wrap that conversation up. A Place Called Wits In. Our scripture can be found in Psalm 107, 23 through 30. And I'm gonna read it, it is the NRSV and that's where we are. It says, some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord, his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind which lifted up the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heaven. They went down to the depths, their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he brought them out from their distress. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. God, give us your wisdom. When we find ourselves in a place called wit's end, give us your strength when we find ourselves in a place called wit's end. It's in your name we pray and ask it all, amen. So I read that scripture and those sailors or, or people are on a boat. It's common saying today that we're at our wit's end. I said it last week, sometimes I've said it, oh my goodness, I'm at my wit's end with this or with that. So it can cause us to question or to wonder what the writer of Psalm 107 means by they were at their wits end. When we say it, I'm at my wits end, we mean that we're frustrated, uh, tired, that we've run out of solutions to the situation or we can't fix the problem that we face. For many of us, we know what it feels like to be at our wit's end. We know what it's like to be at this place called wit's end. I said last week, if wit's end were a destination, it would continually be overbooked because we all get there. In last week's lesson, we, fa we focused on Job and he was dealing with a list of catastrophic events that disfigured life as he knew it. One day he has a family and possessions and the next day everything is lost. Job faced a whirlwind of misfortune. And here in Psalm 107, we meet a group of sailors who are at their wit's end. Why? Why are they at their wit's end? You see in Psalm 107 verse 23, we can see how the people came to be at their wit's end. It's the psalmist tells a story about some who went out to sea on ships. The Lord spoke and a mighty wind arose. The wind and waves became so fierce that the sailors became frightened and the scripture says their courage melted away. You see, scripture says that the sailors began to reel and stagger like drunkards because they were at their wit's end. In their distress, they called out to God and God stilled the storm. The people on the ship were thankful and they praised God for delivering them. The people were at their wit's end. The sailors were at their wit's end. Job was at his wit's end. Last week I talked about the lady with the issue of blood. She was at her wit's end. Remember she had spent all her money. She'd gone to different doctors. She was at her wit's end. Sometimes we're at our wit's end and it's beyond our control. Last week I talked about our choices. This week some things are just beyond our control. It was beyond the sailors' control. It had nothing to do with the choices of the sailors on the boat. It was beyond their control. You can't control the company layoffs. That's beyond your control. That has more to do with how they're trying to please their shareholders than anything. It has nothing to do with you. Some things are beyond our control. Some things come upon us unexpectedly. The sailors were not expecting the 
rough seas. They were expecting calm, clear, cool waters. But when they got on the boat and they got out of ways, hey, guess what? A storm came up. They weren't expecting that. Some things happen in our lives unexpectedly. No, you don't go to the doctor expecting to get a negative report. I don't know anybody who drives to the doctor and says, okay, great, I'm going to get a negative report today. You don't go expecting that. Some things happen beyond our control. Guess what? But you get the negative report anyway. It happens. No, you don't get married expecting to get divorced a few years later, but guess what? It happens. There are going to be things that are beyond our control that are happening in our lives. Through this passage of scripture, we see that God is in control and we are not. We like to think we can control everything, but at the end of the day, God is in control. The people on the boat, the sailors, their wisdom was swallowed up. Everything they tried, everything they knew to try because they were sailors, hey, it didn't work. We can try everything we know. We can ask everybody we know. It is not until we turn to God. Remember I said that last week, turn to God that we'll get the answers and the relief that we need. These sailors are being uh, real like drunken men staggering around. Finally, in their distress, they call out to God. Oh, you can call anyone that you know, but there is not a woman or a man alive that can help you when you're facing a fierce sea. They called to the Lord and God delivered them out of their distress. Over and over again, the scripture describes the faithful, not as those who never saw trouble, but as those who cried out to God in their crises. The men and women we remember as models faced great times of trouble and days of distress. And God heard their cries for help. God was not deaf then, nor is God deaf today. To the voices of God's people, however great or humble, especially in a time of crisis. Our God is not just the God who speaks, remarkably as that is, but also wonder upon wonder, he is the God who listens. Our God listens, he hears and answers the cries of desperate people. The Psalms is particular, uh, the, the Psalm in particular celebrate God's eagerness to hear and help his people in their day of distress in time of trouble. The psalmist testified that God had been a fortress and a refuge in the day of distress. We must know where to turn for help. We have to cry out to God. When we get to a place called wit's end, God will meet you there. God will hear and God will answer your call for help. Help is on the way. Good evening, church family. I'm Elder Savannah Brooks. Thank you for joining us this evening. That wraps up our discussion on a place called Wits Inn. Why don't you come back next week and join me as we begin our discussion on overwhelmed. See you next week. <music>